Alright guys, I'm back. Um, I have a new little test map that I test out my rig on. And right now, I since I have it all sized correctly and all that, I append the rig um, to my map. Uh, I don't want to have them all on the same map. I want them all append, uh, you know, in a sort of directory structure. I tried linking it, um, which is what I'm, I am going to end up doing and showing you how to do with all like your static objects that just sit there and do nothing. But the wow, that did not work great for this. So um, I wouldn't recommend doing a link unless unless you figure out how to do it. Um, I wasn't able to make any changes. The logic bricks didn't import with it. Um, and if I did made make proxy, I had to make proxy for like every single piece in there, and then they weren't parented. It was just a mess. It was horrible. So I am definitely not going to do that. Um, but I do append it now, and it works great that way. I just appended it right to this little level here, and there you go. So, um, lots of changes while you were gone. I was very, very busy. Um, I changed my shotgun mesh when I downloaded from BlendSwap, because um, that was a render-ready, uh, not a game engine-ready. So there's a new, I think it's new, I mean the modifier itself isn't new but uh, the options are where you can do decimate um, and planar and that should um, reduce the number of faces and all that sort of thing so I went ahead did that and cut out as much as I could deleted a few little tiny pieces changed that a little bit you know nothing major but I was just hoping to get the poly count down because a few of my friends are trying to play they don't have you know I have a high end rig um, and they don't and it didn't work very well it was just a little bit jerky so um, so that is something I worked and I tried to do it with this mesh it uh, just just didn't work so um, didn't work very well at all but I did go through and also redid all of the textures um, and let me go ahead and turn on screencast keys here and then we're going to make that and we're going to do shift G select the group Shift H, so we're just looking at this. It's very nice. So um, I did change all the textures. I compressed them a little more. I do all my textures. These were originally TGA files. I'm changing to PNG files. They seem to work fine um, so far, at least. <clears throat> and I, you know, messed with them a little bit so that they're a little different, but nothing too major. I mean, you still get the basics. That planer will do stuff like this and kind of screw it up, so I, you have to adjust the textures a little bit. I don't care enough to actually do it. I had to redo all these textures, too, because they were on a 1024 for these arms, but I wasn't using most of the space, so I had to redo everything and then re-texture it, so... Well, it's still technically visible, so good for me. Um, Next, we uh, what else did I do? Yeah, the the armature for this for some reason. If you go into back to previous, actually, let's go back to default. Um, if I went to my armature and did rest position, it was like twice the size, double the size, and I was like, well, that should be easy. I'll just reapply rest position, but that doesn't work. It scales everything from the pose position. It just it just didn't work. So I had to go ahead and delete that, which I fortunately I didn't have many animations because I was anticipating you know some sort of problems, but I have to redo all the animations uh, currently I don't have any. Hopefully I'll get them done sometime this week. Uh, you know, holidays and stuff, you gotta go do family stuff. Ugh. <laughs> no, no. Um, so I will be busy unfortunately, but I'll try and get that done and get another small story out. Other news, um, yeah the whole actuator, or the whole um, servo motion yeah that didn't work out great looking back on it now for this past week that I've been working on it I think I could have got it working the way I wanted it to but um, I think I'm actually going to continue the way I have it um, what happened was if you hold down multiple servo keys at once like W and the S you can sit there and gain up momentum then when you release it BAM you like just slide across the floor which looking at it now you'll probably be able to do some sort of sensor that would only allow one of the keys to be pressed at one time. It, it shouldn't be that hard. But at the time, I had no idea. So I'll, I'll show you what I switched to. Well, we'll be recreating sort of what I switched to. So I have another Blender file open here. So let's go back to our logic game logic here. And I kept the motion here. 
to the servo control. Um, one of the things, I do still have a servo control for forward motion and for left, back, and right I actually use um, linear velocity um, to the local axis, and that actually seems to work fairly well. Um, you don't have like the collision problems you would get with like the location settings here, or you can get with location settings here, um, and it still seems to mimic good behavior. So, um, and why uh, for some reason I go left only one and right I go 150? That makes a lot of sense there. I am a lame person apparently. Um, so, essentially, um, we can still, uh, this is the servo controller right here. This is, um, and it's going to be jerky again, I always forget when I record. Um, so it's moving forward, and you can move left and right and back. And having the servo control be the forward one, that means when you click like W and S together, S takes over, W does nothing. So if you hold down the forward and backward keys at the same time, you'll go backwards. Um, and for left and right, whatever one you hit last really is the one that's going to work. So, um, all right. So, so that's pretty much um, the change I made, and that was fairly simple. I I haven't seen too many people using the linear velocity for movement, um, but you know it seems to work for me. I haven't had any issues yet so um, and I still use forward for server control I honestly don't know why but all right so that's I believe that's pretty much it's been a while since I made one um, made a video but it's I believe that's pretty much where we left off with that um, just the WASD and of course we had all the logic bricks on you know the skeletons uh, the armature skeletons the armature and all that uh, a lot of this we obviously don't have any animations on them anymore, but once we add them, we can uh, we can set that all back up. So I think I was messing around with that. But all right, so back to this. We're going to uh, you'll notice a few issues uh, if we let's see if I can find an edge fairly easily. Let me see. Let's grab this group. and hit play well that's not let's go right about there play all right and we're facing the edge and if you hit the forward key as you fall off the edge okay you actually worked fairly well but you can continue walking forward um, in the air, which is not something I want because you're not supposed to be able to walk really forward in the air. Although it does drop off fairly quickly. On my other map though, I was having issues with that. But um, We'll also need this for for other reasons as well. But We're going to add a collision sensor and it's going to be floor. That's how we know that we're touching the floor and all we need to do is say property floor. And then we're going to do it like this so that we can only walk when we are actually touching the floor. Because walking when we're not touching the floor is pretty pointless. So let's go ahead and play that. You notice, hey, I can't walk at all. So that all I need to do is let's do a shift. Nope. Um, let's do Alt H and then we're going to add a game property of floor to this plane at the bottom here. Then we're going to hit zero, hit play, and we can walk because it has a property of floor. So that can be very useful. You don't want them walking in midair. And I think we'll, when we improve, I think there's a way to improve our. Um, animations, our walk animations and all that and how they interact. Um, once we do that uh, we won't make that animation when we're falling. That walking animation if we're hitting the WAS or D keys as we're falling it won't make that animation go which we don't want. So, 
Um, the next thing that we sort of need is um, if we're walking, a lot of games, a lot of first person shooter games, you can hold down the forward and the uh, let me see. forward and the side button at the same time and you'll be able to walk sideways with this one alright if we're playing with a little more it's not working quite the same way that mine is um, my script that I've set up and that's logic breaks I should say not script um, and that's because where your mouse points it kind of gives that linear velocity so it does give it slight slight amounts of sideways turning but if you wanted more if you wanted a lot more control all you would do is we'll set up one and that would be this right here all you do is add a sensor um, of actually no you don't need to add any sensors you just need to add actuator here of motion and then let's say um, if you want it it depends on how much motion you want to give uh, each side but let's say you're going forward into the right you would add your linear velocity here of negative 1.50 and the y would be uh, 1.0 there because you're going forward and to the right. So when you go back into, oh, um, and you would need two keys for that. So let's add an AND controller. You would need a W and the D here. And then you connect that up and hit play. Let's back it up just a little bit. So now if you wanted to go forward and to the right, you would hit this and I would move it on a sideways motion give you that sort of linear velocity but if you moved forward into the left it wouldn't do nearly as much so so that would be one thing you could add you could add all four of those um, if you wanted to forward back um, left and right for all of them <clears throat> alright so that's that we'll close that out Alright, the next thing we'll probably want to add is a jump. Um, and I don't have an animation for this again, that's another thing we'll have to um, add later. Um, usually that's the space bar, so we'll add sensor, keyboard, space bar. And then we're going to want to make sure they can only jump while they're on the floor. So when we add, we'll add a jump uh, motion and the motion is just going to be a simple motion along the Z um, linear velocity, local and usually 3.00 and so you have spacebar and that and you click and then you add collision with the floor BAM so they can only jump when they're on the floor, they can't sit there and jump multiple times in the air and so there's your jump. You're jumping. Now you'll immediately notice that if you're trying to walk and jump, you jump straight up in the air. You don't carry forward the momentum. I looked for an easy way to do this. I couldn't find one. I have one that wasn't Python scripting. You'll see after the end of this tutorial why Python scripting is probably the way you want to go, you know, with this, but uh, if, especially if you want to get complicated things. So um, if you want to go uh, jump and move in the same at the same time, uh, the way I had to do it was do jump forward and then do the same thing that we did with the front right. Um, you just add the motion and um, let's say if we want to make this a jump forward we would just do negative 2.00 and now it will automatically be a jump forward by default. So when you go and jump, you'll jump forward. So, but obviously you can't, every time you hit the space bar, you're going to jump forward. So, but you just add all of those, um, all of those in, key by key. It takes a long time. It gets annoying, I know. Um, so after the jumps, you'll probably want to add a run a lot of times. 
So what we'll do here is we're going to add another sensor, uh, keyboard sensor, and it's going to be left shift for run. You know, call it run. And for that, we want to add another motion again. And once again, it's going to be run F for run forward. So this one's going to be slightly different. We're going to click the A, which adds the linear velocity. So let's say add, since we're running forward, let's do negative 0.5. And then we'll, that'll be a lot probably. But um, whenever we have the Add an and control there. When we have the left shift and the W key, let's go ahead and run forward. And once again, play. Let's back up so we can see the cube. And then hold down the shift and bam. See, as you can see, it's a lot faster than our regular walk speed. So let's see. All right. So. That's your run. And you might want to add a timer to that or um, uh, see there's probably an easy way to do that. Let me think about that a quick second before we go on. Well, guys, the only way I can think of is putting it in a different state um, and having a timer run. And when it enters that state, it resets the timer to zero. And then after two seconds or whatever, it, it'll go ahead and cut the cut the state back. Or no, you just have a delay of two seconds once you enter that state, and then go back to the other state. That's all I can tell you for that. Um, without getting Python involved. I wish there was an easier way. I really wish there was. I wish there was like a timer clamp on these inputs right here, but or a timer clamp on the actuators. I don't know. Something like that would be nice, I think, unless there's an easy way to do it that I just don't know about. But, all right, so let's see. So far we've covered jump, run, um, added collision for the floor. Um, because that's always necessary. We should add that to our run too. So if you wanted, you could of course add the run forward, run left, run right. I didn't add a run back on my other um, one because I, I didn't think you should be able to run back. Walk back if you want, but no running back. All right, so let's see what's next. And I hate that that always disappears on me. Well, technically the next thing is crouching, although I've been unable to discover any way to get that to work. So that is, uh, I'll post a link to a forum topic that I started, and you can sort of download a blend file of me trying to get the crouching working. Um, and there might be a way to get it working. One of the um, one of the guys posted a example blend file that might work. Um, maybe I'll look into that in the future. but. For now, I think um, we're going to continue on with a different uh, tutorial, um, which is going to be probably our advanced movement tutorial using Python. So that's all for this one.